Good afternoon from New York City and Columbia Business School Executive Education. We're very happy that you were able to join us for the How Motivation Works webinar with Professor Tori Higgins. Before I introduce Professor Higgins, I'd like to go over a few quick logistics for the webinar. After the webinar, a recording will be emailed to you, so you'll have a, the complete version in your inbox after the webinar. Also, please use the Q&A box throughout the webinar, and we've designated the last 10 minutes to answer as many questions as possible. And finally, if you'd like to tweet about the webinar, please use our hashtag CBSExecEd. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to introduce Professor Tori Higgins. Today, he is the Stanley Schachter Professor of Psychology at the Columbia Department of Psychology and is also the Professor of Business at the Columbia Business School. He is also the Director of Motivation, uh, the Director of the Motivation Science Center at Columbia. So he has many roles here. He is the author of Beyond Pleasure and Pain, How Motivation Works, and the co-author of Focus, Use Different Ways of Seeing the World for Success and Influence. Professor Higgins, it's great to be with you today. Yeah, thank you. Great. Great so before be we begin, I just want to start this off by asking, I've, you know, over the years working with many executives in our executive edu education programs, I've seen the question come up, how can I motivate my team? How can I motivate the people that work for me, who I work with? And people really struggle with this. And you've gone way beyond the sort of uh, concept of carrots and sticks. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, it is interesting that if you're a manager, uh, how important motivation is to you and to try to understand how do you motivate uh, people who you're working with, uh, especially other members of your team when you're a team manager. How do you motivate yourself? Um, and that interest in how motivation works actually gets stronger and stronger the higher up the hierarchy you go. And, and so you, you find that people who are the CEO presidents of companies, uh, people who are actually the admirals and the generals in armed forces, uh, they will say that motivation becomes the most important thing to them. And so it becomes more and more important as, as you go up. And historically, people had this very clear idea that, that what really matters with people when it comes to motivation is that people want maximize pleasure and minimize pain. Right. And that idea of what motivation is has been around for thousands of years. Uh, and it's reflected in that question, which is how to motivate others, because then the assumption is, well, to motivate others, I should be using incentives where I'm either giving them a kind of carrot, uh, which would maximize pleasure, or I would kind of threaten them uh, with pain, which right. is the sticks. And that's where we have this carrots and sticks idea. And, uh, and I'm not going to say that that incentives don't work. But what I am gonna say is two things. One is that you need to know more clearly which incentive for which person at which situation. Otherwise, it won't work. And, and I think there has been this idea that carrots and sticks is kind of a you know, fix all problem solution. Uh, and, and that's actually not the case. And, so I'll, gi I'll give you just a quick example of this because I think it's an interesting one. So uh, Boeing uh, Aerospace Company uh, was having problems with their developers. And, and the problem was that these developers were creating very innovative products. Uh, so the planes were really quite exciting in terms of, of, of what was going into them that was new and, and, and sort of creative. Uh, but... Uh, there was so much emphasis on that that there wasn't as much emphasis on, on something like safety and reliability. And when you're talking about airplanes, uh, this was making management pretty uncomfortable because uh, you can't afford not to have planes that are safe and reliable. And so they decided that they needed to motivate the developers to emphasize more the safety and reliability. And they introduced the bonus system, which sounds like you know, of course, that's, that's what you do. And so they created this idea that if you do better on the safety of reliability over the year, then you'll get a bonus. And what they discovered is that it didn't work. And mm. if anything, it made it worse. Mm. 
And so the question is, well, how could that be? <laughs> because obviously bonuses, uh, obvious to most people. Historically, are, that's yeah, what, yeah. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what you, do. That's what you go to. Um, and the issue is the answer, you know, the issue uh, underlying this is actually, it's not that pleasure and pain don't matter. It's that there are two completely separate systems that are in charge of pleasure and pain. There are two different kinds of pleasure and pain. And you need to know the distinction in order to understand which way, if you're going to use incentives, how you're, you can use it. And this distinction is something I call promotion and prevention. Right. And promotion is a pleasure and pain that has to do with the motivation for growth, for advancement, for going from where you are now, the status quo, if you think about that as a zero right now. Uh, promotion cares about going from that to a plus one, to something better. So it's really, for them, pleasure is that advancement. Pleasure is a gain from where you are to something better. And pain is just staying where you are, <laughs> staying in zero. And so they have pleasure and pain, the pleasure of gain and the pain of non-gain. People who say, I've plateaued. You know, those yeah. are people, they don't want to stay in that plateau. Yeah, no, exactly. Get. They want to keep making progress. Right, right. Uh, in the other system, the prevention system, uh, is actually very different. The prevention system is concerned with safety and security. What they want to do is maintain what's satisfied. You know, if you have something now that's basically working, you know, don't fix it if it ain't broke. And so if it, things are going pretty well, just keep going and, and do what you can to maintain that. So in that system, if you have a status quo that's really pretty good, the issue is not to try to do something much better than that go for the plus one is to maintain where you are and make sure you have that and don't go to a minus one. Right. And so that system is very different. And in that system, a status quo, uh, kind of a zero is, uh, is actually okay because it's a not loss. It's a non loss. And, and so that's the pleasure. The pleasure is to maintain non loss. Uh, the pain would be if you slipped into minus one and, and then you'd have pain. So, it also is a pleasure and pain system, but as you hopefully can see, the difference between gain and non-gain as pleasure and pain and non-loss loss as pleasure and pain is very, very different. Right. And, and what you would do for motivating people is different. And so to return to the Boeing example, the problem here was that these developers were all about promotion. They were all about trying to do things better, innovative, creative, plus one. What the, the managers want, the CEOs, the principals, what they wanted is safety and reliability. They, what they needed was the developers to be in prevention right. so that they would naturally care about safety and security. Right. And instead, by giving them a bonus, which is a plus one more promotion incentive, they were putting the developers even more in promotion, which is exactly what they didn't want to do. Exactly. And I would say that probably the, the customer would actually prefer them to be air on the side of prevention. You yes. know, it's great to have new airplanes and newer ideas, but I think with that industry, yeah. in particular, they're making a large mistake yeah. going exactly. into promotion field. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, I've heard, I know I've seen in your writing and I've seen many professors, the difference is a promotion person plays to win and a prevention person plays to not lose. Correct. That's the, sort of like the, exactly. I think that's a great quote. Yeah, yeah. no, exactly. And you see it in, in different sports, you know, yeah. like in, in, in tennis, they're, they're the ones who want to win the point by rushing the net right. and getting the, getting the point. Right. Uh, and, and the other ones stay in the baseline right. and just wait until you make the mistake. Right. 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 So these are very different ways of, of winning. Right. It's all about winning. It's still pleasure, but these are two very different systems. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's interesting. So I want to go a little deeper down mm -hmm. to this. And, you know, I've, this is my copy of your book, and I've you know, dog-eared some of the pages here and marked them. And I read this quote, and I thought it could lead us to our mm -hmm. next to our mm -hmm. next section of going a little deeper, mm -hmm. which is it says, influencers are used to thinking a lot about what people want, but tend to overlook the fact that people also have preferences about the way they get it. And so this really yeah. moves on to promotion and prevention is not just about the outcome, but there is a process here. Right. So can you go a little further deeper down with your other? Yeah, thank you. Well, 
what I also find very interesting is, is that there are strategic ways of pursuing goals, strategic ways of making things happen that end up being naturally tied to promotion or prevention. So if you're in the promotion system and what you care about is, is progress and what you care about is making gains, then to go about pursuing your goals in an eager way is a natural fit with promotion. And so if you as a manager are working on something where you do want people to be in promotion, then to introduce what you're all doing on the team in an eager, enthusiastic way is something that will make everybody feel this is a fit. And, and what we know is that it makes them feel right about right. what they're doing. Right. They feel right. Uh, if on the other hand, you had a manager who is so prevention that they just can't help but do things in a vigilant way, right. in a careful way, that's actually a non-fit with a promotion task. And it makes people feel wrong about what they're doing. On the other hand, vigilance is great for prevention. So if the task you're working on is safety and reliability, if you're really trying to make these planes safe and reliable, then introducing the task to your developers as this is about vigilance and being careful, and even in your own nonverbal behavior, behave in a kind of careful, deliberative, vigilant way, that would be something that would fit the idea of this is prevention. Right. The, the reason it matters is you, you could say, well, um, why does this matter to managers? It, it, it matters to managers because it's not as if you cannot separate these systems. It's, it's possible that you could all be working on a promotion task and you have a team leader who introduces it as about vigilance. Mm -hmm. So suddenly you have a non-fit and, and if it's, you know, a prevention kind of task, suddenly you have this team leader who's all eager and enthusiastic which is a non-fit. So it's important, this second idea is very important because people really do care right. about how they go about doing things. Right. And promotion people prefer, the system prefers to go about things in an eager, enthusiastic way right. and prevention to go about it in a vigilant, careful way. Right, right. So, you know, there's, you had mentioned that there are three kinds of effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, so in, in, in my first book, Beyond Pleasure and Pain, uh, the question was, what, what, is, what is motivation? How does it work? And uh, one way is to say, well, it works in terms of value. It, it works in terms of having uh, desired outcomes, right. which I call value. And, and the promotion prevention distinction is saying, okay, value matters, desired outcomes matter, but you need to appreciate there's a promotion version of that, which is going for gains, and a prevention version, which is to maintain non-losses. So that's already going beyond just pleasure and pain. But what's also important is that it's not only about value. There are two other ways of being effective. And one of them is control, and the other one is truth. And Tell us about this. Yeah, so control, control is uh, something you see with Toddlers, toddlers and puppy dogs are my favorite examples, uh, where they just want to do something. They just want to make something happen. Uh, they want to like jump into the puddle and, and things fly. And, and so it's, it's a motivation we all have, which is to just effect change, make change happen. Uh, and and it, it's something that people care a lot about in their lives. It, it's not just having desired outcomes. You, you want to feel that that you were part of making that desire, right. Right? that you were right. the agent of it, that, right. that you were in control. It wasn't just given to you. Right. It's like the poor little rich kid. You know, the kid has all the desired outcomes in the world, right. but, but they're just being given to the right. child. And that's why it is the poor the yeah. rich kid, because right. they have no actual control effectiveness. Okay. So control effectiveness really matters. The other one that, that maybe has received even less attention is truth mm. effectiveness. So for humans especially, we care about knowing what's right and wrong, knowing what's correct and incorrect, knowing what's real versus imaginary. Uh, and, you know, young children find it difficult to know, is this imaginary or is it real? Is it really a monster under my bed or not? And, and so for the rest of us, it's still the case. We need to know, well, is this really 
the best goal for us to be attaining? Is this really the right way to go about? Those questions, you know, is this really the best goal, really the right way, are truth questions. They're, 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 they're saying that we, we need to find what is the truth about this. And, and so when we're making decisions and we're deciding where to go, what goals to pursue, how to do it, we care a lot about what the truth is. And people sometimes forget how important that is to humans, but it's so important that people will die for it. So suicide bombers and, 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 and religious uh, saints, uh, many of them took on painful death right. for the sake of the truth. Right. And this is something very unique about humans and something that you need to understand when you are motivating others. You need to understand that, that it's very important to them to understand, yes, this really really truly right. is the goal to pursue this is really truly the way to do it right. and if you make sure that they're part of the discussion so that they are on board with the goal and on board with this way of doing it so they believe yes this is the right way of doing it the right goal uh they're going to be much more motivated right well it's i, I mentioned in a in a previous webinar with Professor Willie Peterson, you know, that it's the sort of the instinct from ch childhood of the why. You know, mm -hmm. why am I doing this? Yep. And when you're young, you may not know the outcome of what you're doing, right? Because yep. you're sort of, you're out, like you said, you're in that control moment. Mm -hmm. But then you start to seek the truth, yep. even when you're little. Yep. You know, so where you may not have a handle on, you know, what, what is the desired outcome mm -hmm. here? You're just sort of living in the moment. Yep. But to seek that truth is so important since you're a child. And, yeah. and it doesn't motivate people if they don't have yeah. a why. Yeah, and it's interesting. It does develop. So it's, it's not there, you know, uh, at two. Right. Um, and it's not only to do with language. Even when children have language, they don't start with why questions. But at some point, they do. Right. Right? And, and, and anybody who's a parent, like, it has the situation where you give an answer and they go, why? And give right. another answer and go, why? It's like, not now, they're really <laughs> into the, to the why thing. Uh, I think what's important here is uh, that, that the success of companies and the success of people in their lives, um, what we would call you know, a good successful company or what we would call a good life, uh, that truth is critical uh, to that. And it, it, it's interesting, the word good has both meanings. It has the meaning of of desired outcomes, good as in like happiness kind of good. Right. But the good life always has this sort of ethical, moral, what is the right way of doing things. Right. So it's, it's fundamental to making people feel effective. And here again, um, what matters is how things fit together. Um, so truth and control work best when they fit together. Right. And uh, so if you think about the fact that you're pursuing a goal, you, you'll never be effective unless you get on with it. At some point, you've got to move forward, get on with it, make it happen. You need control. You, you need that, what we call locomotion. You need to actually move, get out of the station, right? So that's really critical. But what's also critical is to know what direction you're going. Right. You, you could leave the station, but you're actually going to Philadelphia and you meant to go to Boston. Right? Right. And, and so locomotion itself um, is not enough. You need somebody to make sure that it is the right direction, that it really is where you want to go. And that's the truth again. And that's what we call assessment. assessment. And this combination of, of locomotion and assessment, uh, we found that when they're both high, that's when individuals perform the best and that's when teams perform the best. And it's because they set constraints on each other. Um, so, uh, each one has upsides, each one has downsides, but when they work together, then you get the best of both, and then you go really in the right direction. Right. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So let's, I, there's a, another uh, quote in the book uh, I'd like to just quickly ask you about, about the I and the we, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on the on being in a company that I being promotion Mm -hmm. and we being prevention. Mm -hmm. I know I'm being very general here, but mm -hmm. can you just talk quickly about that and then we'll begin to take some questions okay. from the audience. Sure. Well, 
the promotion system as a goal, we call ideal goals. So, so it's like what you ideally want to be. And that has to do with your hopes and aspirations. So there's kind of a natural relation between promotion and I, because it's your personal hopes and aspirations. And on the other hand, with prevention, it's more about your duties and obligations. Right. And, and again, it's natural if you're thinking, what are my duties and obligations to others is, is almost always the case. And so that's always more of a we uh, than ideal. We also have information that when people are creating networks, uh, so it, they're both social in that sense. People in promotion really want the other members of the network to all be tied to them, but not to each other. Mm. So, so then you become the only game in town. You're the hub of the wheel and it's about me. Right. Uh, and, and that's something that actually appeals to people in promotion right. in prevention. They actually want all the other parts of the network to be tied to each other right. and they want high density right. and high density actually serves having clear norms. And, and norms allow you to maintain the, right. the satisfactory status quo. And any company needs a balance. Yes. I mean, that's really the end of this. Every company needs a balance of these two. Yep. And you had mentioned when we were discussing before is that, that the constraints are what make a company, the locomotion happen yep. with the assessment. Because then you can get the benefits right. of each system and constrain the cost. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right. Would you like to take some questions sure. from the audience? Sure. That'd be okay. Our first question comes from Abel. Gee, is it appropriate to directly ask someone what their motivation and thus incentive should be? Or should you work on learning to read your team to get the right incentive? So this is something we talked about before also. Mm -hmm. like how do you discover promotion prevention mm -hmm. within an organization? You know, yeah. and, and then that yeah. question. So uh, one way is observing people. Um, that would that gives you a sense of so you can tell if you're working with someone a long time whether there's someone who normally pursues goals with an eager enthusiastic nonverbal and everything else uh, or a more vigilant and careful so you can actually that's something you can actually Assess. observe uh, but there's some questions you can ask that are uh, especially in a in an interview. Uh, if you don't want to give them a questionnaire, we have questionnaires, right. and the questionnaires actually are a very useful way of doing this. But there are certain questions you can ask. And, and one question would be, uh, what is it that really uh, matters to you when you're working on your goals? Are, are, you, are you trying to make sure that things stay at a good level? Mm -hmm. that, that what you're making, you know, real effort to make sure that things don't go wrong and that you continue to be successful mm -hmm. the way you have been successful? Or do you need to make progress? Do you need to do something even more? You need to be even better than where you are. And so if you're more of the first, that's more prevention. And if the second is more promotion. Right. And what's interesting about this is it, it doesn't have to do with the success of a company or, or how successful an individual is. So you can have a company that has 95% of the market, like Intel, you know, but something like that. Well, it wouldn't make sense that you want to maintain that. Right. It's not so much you want to move from that to something even higher. You just want to do whatever you can to maintain it, right? right? And so you'll find people uh, who that's what they want to do and you know their prevention. The other thing is, is uh, what happens when things don't go well? And if you have a promotion person and things don't go well, they're going to be discouraged and, and disappointed and sad. You can see that. If they're prevention of things don't go well, they're going to be nervous and tense and anxious. Mm -hmm. So you can often see from how people respond to, to difficulties and barriers, right. what kind of person. Is it easiest in sort of system. heightened situations like that to really be able to delineate the two? You know, it's, I would think, you know, what's the, what is also the way to motivate an entire team where you have hopefully yeah. disparate yeah. You know, promotion prevention? So, you know, do you have any suggestions for those out there to not just motivate individually, yeah. but to motiv motivate the total? Yeah, that's always the, you know, the, the great question. So what do you do if, if you have promotion and prevention people? Which you hopefully do. Yeah, right. uh, which you really do hope that you'll do. Uh, the nice news is that people naturally tune in to a message that works for them. Mm. Um, and so if you give a message that is both a promotion and a prevention 
message. Right. Um, you know, it's interesting that heaven for many religions is joy and peace. Well, joy is, is promotion succeeding and peace is prevention succeeding. Oh, that's interesting. And so, it's a, and, and people yeah. talk about the vision, speech, and the burning platform mm -hmm. speech. Well, you can actually give a little bit of both in the same speech. And the promotion people will hear the vision and get excited. And the prevention people will go, oh, my God, I need to work harder okay. because of the burning platform. Right. So you, yeah. just, you just need to have a balance in your speech. You just like balance, you have a balance in your, in your organization. Yeah. And hearing the other side doesn't necessarily turn somebody off. Correct. They just may not, they may not register. They just don't listen. <laughs> they don't, they listen. don't pay exactly. attention. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Another question from Aaron J. Is the view that I equals promotion and we equals prevention primarily a Western perspective? Is it reversed in Eastern culture? Yeah, that's a, that's a, question. a, a great question. And uh, the, the good news is that it's the same cross-culturally. So every culture that we've studied, uh, there are some individuals in that culture who are more promotion and some that are more prevention. And that's true in every culture. There's some promotion, some prevention. What varies across the cultures is what's predominant. So in Japan or, or South Korea, there are more prevention individuals than promotion. In the United States and Italy, there's more promotion than prevention. What we find is how promotion works, how prevention works. Things like promotion being I and prevention being we, those are actually universal. Okay. How promotion works and how prevention works is the same in Japan as it is in the United States. So, so you don't get those kinds of, of differences. Okay. Why it matters is that if you're a promotion person and you're living in Japan, well, the general culture is prevention and you're a promotion individual, that makes life a little more difficult uh, if you're a promotion person living in Japan or a prevention person living in the States. Right. Uh, so there is that kind of effect, right. but, but how promotion plays out and how prevention plays out, including which is I and which is we, that's a universal. Universal, right. Uh, quick, uh, Richard C., what assessment would you recommend to learn about other styles? For example, Myers-Briggs, DISC, are there any... Uh, you said you mentioned you actually yeah so we we have something called the regulatory focus questionnaire regular regulatory focus. focus questionnaire okay. and uh that's the one that that has been validated it's been used over 15 different countries mm -hmm. so uh it works with with all kinds of different languages and different cultures okay. uh it works even with younger children and, and older people so this this is a very uh good questionnaire in the sense there's only 11 items Right. So it, it takes like five minutes uh, and you'll get a score for promotion, a separate score for prevention. Uh, and it's important for people to realize that people could be high on both. Some people are high on promotion and high on prevention. Right. And some people are low on both. This allows you to measure all right. of that. Right. I have a quick question. So, you know, in all of your work, how would you say, how does neuroscience based research support your motivation concept? Yeah. So what's the research? Well, the, there is actually very good research uh, explicitly on promotion prevention to see whether they do have different regions. Uh, and uh, the most recent research done by Tim Strauman at Duke University and his colleagues uh, is wonderfully well-controlled research that finds that there are promotion regions that are separate and distinct from prevention regions. Um, so there's definitely uh, different uh, regions associated with this. Uh, and importantly, that these d areas, these regions, are not the same as just approach avoidance. So in the same research, he shows that, that the regions for promotion or prevention are not approach avoidance. And, and why that's important is, is what I was saying earlier, that, that promotion people approach gains and avoid non-gains. And prevention approach non losses and avoid losses, and so approach avoidance is in both systems, and that's what this research actually shows that it is not about approach avoidance, and what's left over are separate regions for promotion and prevention. Right, right. Well, it looks like we have time for one more question. Right. So, can one person be promotion focused in one? I was going to ask you this actually. So, this is, thank you. Can one person be promotion focused in one phase of life, then move on to prevention in a different phase of life, or vice versa? I, I think so. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it, 
It turns out there was a time when we didn't have really good evidence of that, meaning that uh, there is something general uh, about people where they could be generally speaking more promotion than right. prevention or generally speaking. Uh, but we now have evidence uh, just in the last couple of years that there is some domain specificity to this. Uh, and it, it revolves around certain uh, kinds of uh, areas of life that make certain demands. So, right. so there's a difference between being a student uh, and being a friend. And, and some people can be more promotion as a, as a friend and more prevention as a student or vice versa. So we are beginning to find that, in fact, there are those right. kinds of differences. This has been great. All right, thank you so much. I could speak to you all afternoon about this. This is a very interesting topic to me and I'm sure to our many viewers today. Thank you so much for being with us for the How Motivation Works webinar. My name is Scott Gardner. Professor Tori Higgins and I were very happy that we're here. As you see on your screen right now, as a reminder, uh, two books, Beyond Pleasure and Pain and Focus. And I believe you have a new book that may be coming out soon. Like well, to... I, I have completed a third book and I do have some publishers interested in it. <laughs> so, so it's uh, called Being Human, Shared Reality for Better and Worse. Well, I look forward to reading that. Thank you very much yeah. for joining us yeah, today. Thank you. Thank you.